Hi. Hi. How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm great. I'm very excited for this first episode. Woo woo. You're my first <laughs> victim. Are you so excited? <laughs> I'm very excited, actually. It's quite an honor to be the first, actually. Oh well, you know, it's just all going to be downhill from here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, you know, we're just going to go ahead. We've got a lot of people. I'm just so excited to have you. And, you know, we're just going to get this party started. I mean, who knew yeah. that Freemasons plus party would go together? I mean, I know, right? <laughs> who knew? So, hi, everybody. I'm Rachel Donnelly from Black Dress Consultants. And you are joining us on our inaugural episode, I guess I can say episode, of the Aftershocks of After Loss, where each week we will have a different guest in what we call the death care industry to come on and we're just going to wax on poetically about all the things that we talk about and network about and just, just have a good old time and try to bring some humor to what we do because we've got to find the humor in it. So, so Marina, why don't you tell us a little bit about Irene? Yeah, for sure. Um, so Irene Cremations is a, the first online funeral home um, in Canada, in Ontario. And um, what we do is through our online platform, that is irene.ca, we allow a family who's located in Ontario to arrange either a direct cremation or a direct aquamation entirely online uh, in just 15 minutes. Um, and if they like, they can also um, have our team of licensed funeral directors assist them with the process as well. Ah, okay, okay. Um in 50 minutes. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable because I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I have planned multiple funerals, um, coordinated multiple cremations and they were, it was not 50 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually the process, um, traditionally, you know, prior to irene.ca, um, the price, the process could be, you know, quite le lengthy and quite tedious. Um, you know, mostly also because you weren't able to do it online. So you'd have to, you know, let's say, look up at the funeral home, um, go to their website, which would usually only provide a phone number and an address. And then you would, from there, you would have to have, you know, back and forth, explain a little bit more about your needs. Whereas our process is very straightforward. Um, you know, on the web page, we lay out everything that's included in our flat fee of either $2,500 or $3,000, depending on whether you want a cremation or an aquamation. And then from there, our team of licensed funeral directors helps guide you through the process and, you know, helps with the paperwork as well, which is often the most confusing part for a lot of yeah. um, people Absolutely. and a lot of families that, you know, have, you know, very little education in the death care industry. You know, m maybe this is their first time planning a funeral or arranging a cremation. And, you know, on top of that, there's a lot of jargon that can be used. So if you're not, well versed in the industry, if you don't have a lot of experience, you know, it can be really overwhelming at a time when you're already, you know, grieving and experiencing a lot of emotions and potentially stress as well. Yeah, I know. And like, when you were just talking about that, like, I just got so excited. And it's probably not normal for us to get so excited <laughs> about <laughs> planning funerals. But, you know, I, I, I was reading an article the other day about the six types of funeral consumers and how, you know, it has really evolved from just three sort of standard types to now there are six. And that really stems from all of the different options that are out there in the death care industry. Um, just, you know, our, our religious um, backgrounds and, and preferences changing and evolving how we're, you know, we're more spread out as families now. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of that stems from just people, we don't talk about death. So people don't know what exactly. to do when a death occurs. So talk me through, I guess, was that one, uh, one of the goals of, of Irene when, when you guys started 
to be that sort of one-stop shop to help walk people who don't know what they don't know through that process. What was the vision of Irene? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, essentially um, the vision was to make death care, you know, not only more accessible, but more affordable and transparent, you know, in the midst of arranging a funeral, a lot of people will just, you know, go to Google and type in, you know, funeral home near me, right. and they'll get like a simple website and a simple web page with maybe an address and a phone number. But you know, no, there's not, not a lot of an email address. I'm gonna go <laughs> not <home>. normally. <laughs> It is old fashioned. Like, I'm like, do they have a rotary dial phone there? Like, what is happening? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, one of the goals was to really just provide, um, you know, people with that information prior to when they find themselves in a situation when they need to make funeral arrangements or cremation arrangements. You know, not only do we have, um, you know, all of our prices and what's included in our package list online, we also provide resources and information, you know, for people who may not be able to afford funerals. So like where they can look to get, you know, government assistance or social assistance right. um, through our blog, we provide a lot of education on, you know, what to do, you know, questions to ask your funeral home, um, consumer rights. So things that you may not know, um, are that funeral homes are legally required to disclose. But, you know, if you don't know to ask those questions, they may count on you not knowing it and therefore may not provide that information right out front or without you asking the right questions. Exactly. So the, the goal of Irene was essentially, you know, to equip people with, um, you know, the resources and the information they need to make informed decisions so that they don't end up overspending, they don't end up going into debt, you know, or, you know, even, um, end up crowdfunding for a funeral, which is really common. Oh, um, yes, I know. Um, what is that, Everlove? Is it Everlove, the, the sort of crowdfunding website where you can, you know, help, you know, put money towards the cost of a friend or family member's funeral, which is, yeah, which is great and awesome. And I think that's just such a unique and a way to, to, to go about that. But also, you know, you and I were talking about this the other day is, we don't do the price check around funerals. Yeah. We don't look at the sticker and, you know, death is, die, death and dying, you know, is one of the, when you look at the life of a family, you know, the top, one of the top three most expensive life events, um, you know, birth, marriage, death. I mean, we, I mean, when I had my kids, I price checked for that stroller and that crib and that exactly body and with my wedding you know the caterer and the dress and we don't do it around death and it's and I think there's this huge stigma around that and yeah. of like oh maybe I don't love my family enough to buy that nice silk pillow and walnut casket um but I love what you were talking about the upfront pricing like just mind-blowing like Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want this to be a drag on the traditional mm -hmm. funeral homes. That's not what this is. But talk us through, because, you know, you and I talked about the average funeral cost in Canada is, would you say, 6000 So it ranges typically um, from about eight to $10,000. And that's for a pretty simple and basic right. service. Right. Um, but, you know, that's nothing elaborate really and a lot of the time that doesn't even really include like any sort of big reception or slideshow or let's say catering or florist is even you know another really big expense uh typically when planning a funeral yeah um so yeah I, and I think even you and I were talking about this before was I think that one of the biggest misconceptions in the industry as well is that the amount of money you spend um on honoring your loved one is equivalent to how much you love them. And that's just not true. And I think that a lot of people, because for so long, the industry has lacked transparency with regards to pricing and what's actually legally required um, and so on and so forth. I think that, you know, a lot of people, especially too, if it's a situation where you have to call or go in person in your grieving, you get fatigued by having to, you know, retell your story or retell, you know, exactly what kind of services you want or what you look, what you're looking for, because it's almost like you have to keep reliving that experience. And sometimes after a loss, that can be really traumatic and really, you know, emotionally draining. So with, with the lack of transparent pricing, um, a lot of people fail to price shop because 
they're mentally and emotionally exhausted. And it's really hard to have to, you know, retell your story and retell your needs over and over again to ensure that you're getting the best price or to even ask questions. You know, it can be very exhausting. Well, and you're not in the right frame of mind. And you're like, what is the fastest, quickest, most efficient way that you know, I can take care of this because I've got 5 million other things to do. Call family, arrange for people to come in out of town and plan mm-hmm. the whole memorial service or wake or, or traditional funeral. So, you know, you're just not in that right, right frame of mind. So what is the average cost for a direct cremation in Canada? Ooh, good question. So prior um, to the launch of Irene, the average cost um, for a cremation is about $5,000. And that's just for a direct cremation. You know, that doesn't often include any sort of memorial service or send off or funeral. So, you know, prior to us offering a direct cremation for $2,500, a lot of the providers were were charging closer to five, which is a lot of money if you compare it to you know the average salary in uh in canada was for 2020 about just under 55 grand so yeah if you know if your loved one hasn't planned ahead or prearranged or prepaid you know that's quite a large percentage of your annual income if you're paying for that you know out of pocket especially you know in a situation where the estate may be in probate. So you may not be able to access the funds from the estate initially to pay for the service or to pay for the funeral or whatever, you know, send off you're looking to do. So it can be quite, quite an expense. And, you know, there are tons of stories even of people going into debt or even crowdfunding that we mentioned earlier to pay for funeral, to pay for funeral arrangements or cremation, because they just simply don't have the means to, you know, pay $5,000 out of pocket. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes that can take months to create an estate banking account, be named, Mm -hmm. you know, in the US or in Georgia, it's just the letters of testamentary and be appointed and then go to the bank. And sometimes that can take months and to put five grand on your credit card and just hope and pray that you're going to get reimbursed road by the estate is can be very stressful. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk through, because one of the neatest things that I think you and I talked about was aquamations. And, yes. Um, I know in the U.S., um, there are only 18 states that have legalized aquamation, Georgia being one of them, which is mind-blowing because, you know, we were just able to buy beer on Sunday a couple of years ago. So it's <laughs> um, we're behind in a lot of things. But so let's talk about you know, when someone calls, calls Irene and, you know, says, hey, I'm looking at either a cremation or an aquamation is, you know, how often does that happen? And how do you counsel a customer on what, what decision to make? Like walk me through that process. Yeah, definitely. Um, So I'll start by um, telling you guys a little bit about aquamation because I feel like there are a lot of people who may not know what it is. Yeah. So essentially, aquamation um, is an and alternative. It almost sounds like a theme park. Like it, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, in Georgia, it's you know alkaline hydrolysis, but I, I know we can't say that. And just everybody, if you're just joining us, I just wanted to reintroduce Marina Morgan from Irene Cremations in Toronto. I'm Rachel Donnelly from Black Earth Consultants here in Atlanta, and we're talking all about cremations and aquamations, and it is not a theme park. So back to you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So aquamation is um, an alternative method of final disposition. Um, so I would say it's an alternative, uh, the closest alternative to cremation. Um, so what it is, is instead of using um fire to create uh, cremated remains or remains, the process uses water and alkaline chemicals. So what that does is it speeds up the process um, of natural decomposition um, as it would occur, say, in a natural burial. But what that, but what the water and the alkaline chemicals do is just speed up that natural process of decomposition. And then um, just as you would with a flame cremation, um, the family, the remains of the deceased are returned um, to the to the family. Um, so they can be scattered, they can be placed in an urn, they can be, um, 
you know, really memorialized in any way that, you know, you and your family see fit just as a flame cremation. And one of the really great things about it is it's a sustainable alternative to flame cremation. So there are no direct emissions of greenhouse gases or mercury produced, um, which, you know, is really great because, you know, for somebody who, let's say, lived an eco-friendly lifestyle, they make the idea of, you know, cremation may not appeal to them. And, you know, natural burial is great, but it's really expensive or it can be really expensive. So it's a great alternative for somebody who, you know, lived a life in which they were really conscious of the environment um, and, you know, want to continue that, you know, even into end of life. So, right. you know, if someone were to call or, you know, if families call and they're wondering, you know, what's the best choice for myself or my loved one, you know, we would kind of ask, you know, just inquire a little bit more about the deceased, you know, what kind of lifestyle did they live? Right. What were their values? You know, if let's say they valued um, taking care of their family. So they don't want, um, they want as much money from the estate to go back to their loved ones as possible. And in an instance like that, we may um, recommend a direct cremation because it's a little bit um, less expensive than an aquamation. And okay. that way it ensures that, you know, the bulk of your estate is going back to your family um, right. versus um, say there's a family that wants to divide the cremated remains or the remains between, you know, 12 family members. In that instance, we may actually recommend aquamation because that process actually produces 20 to 30 percent more remains than flame That's cremation. Awesome. I mean, you learn something new every day. I mean, who knew mm -hmm. that? So I mean, my sister and I split up my mom in five ways, and I thought that that was a lot. So 12 ways, so you get more with aquamation. That is yeah. very, very interesting. Um, and, and I love that you're upfront about that aquamation is going to be a little bit more expensive than the cremation. Mm -hmm. um, so what are sort of some of the biggest pitfalls mistakes. I mean, if you have a customer that's come to you, they've gone the traditional funeral home route, and now they found out about you. Um, what are some of the pitfalls and mistakes that you've seen? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, some of the biggest pitfalls are, you know, not knowing your, your rights as a consumer, you know, a consumer of funeral services or death care services, because um, at the end of the day, you are a consumer and there are things that you're entitled to and questions that you're entitled to at, like ask and they have to answer. So, you know, for example, prior to any sort of contract being drafted, you know, the funeral homes are legally required to provide you, at least in Ontario, um, with an itemized price list. And that's even before the contract is supposed to be drafted. Uh -huh. um, you know, and they also must tell you, you know, say you're saying, hey, you're in a situation where you're like, hey, I'm looking for a florist. Can you recommend any? Um, or say or say they just recommend one without you asking. They are actually legally required to tell you whether or not they get a commission from recommending that service to you as well. Um, so, you know, common pitfalls are things like that. Or even let's say... Um, the person who passed away had a specific casket in mind. So they pre-purchased the casket, but didn't make any other arrangements. Right. So in, in an instance like that, where you're bringing, you know, your casket or you're bringing, you know, something that a funeral home would normally provide, you know, even like an urn or something, they're also legally not allowed to charge you any sort of handling fee uh -huh. for doing that. So a lot of people don't do that as well, or even, um, Say you want to have a viewing prior to having your loved one cremated or, um, you know, uh, decomposed using aquamation. Right. You know, you're also not legally required to embalm the body. Like the embalming the body is just a preservation method. It doesn't actually, um, you know, sanitize the body in any sort of way. So, you know, knowing things like that, um, going into a funeral home or going into a situation where you're making arrangements for a loved one, I feel like is really important. Um, yeah. Because those are the kind of those are the little things that at the end of the day will start to add up. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's the big, you know, I was gonna talk about the S word, which you already touched it, not not that S word, the sustainability S word, because <laughs> embalming a body is is not environmentally friendly uh, yeah. and then you know like you said aquamation adds a little bit a higher element of that sustainability factor rather exactly than cremation um 
so I love that. I love your mission, um, Irene's mission of, you know, trying to, that goal of sustainability. Um, so right now, Irene is only available in Ontario. Is that correct? So the rest of us are just... That is correct. <laughs> luck here, here in the States. So what would be... What are tips and tricks you would recommend to to us? Um, you know, since we don't have Irene, um, what what are tips that you would give us when um, pursuing a traditional or direct cremation and, or an aquamation? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think my you know first piece of advice would be to do your research prior to needing to make those arrangements. I think is you know, number one, I think being equipped with the information uh, prior to the situation when you actually have time to learn about it and you have the energy and the capacity to take to, you know, read about topics that are a little bit more difficult. Right. Um, you know, be proactive, I would say at the end of the day, you know, death is inevitable. And it's something that we're all going to have to, you know, experience the loss of a loved one at some point in our lives. So knowing right. that it's something that's inevitable, the best thing that you can do is, um, you know, plan ahead and do the research prior to, you know, uh, making the arrangements or being in a situation where you have to make those arrangements. Um, I would say also too, um, you know, in, I, I came across this website actually, and I believe it's an American one called the Federal Trade Commission. Um, and on that website as well, um, there's actually the FTC funeral rule. And if you go onto that website and you look at that page, it actually gives you an overview under about what your consumer rights are under the funeral rule. And it's specific to you guys in the U.S., which is a really great resource. And then lastly, I would say, um, you know, I know that a lot of your laws and regulations vary state to state. So, you know, look up. Um, the licensing authority for funeral homes and crematories in your state or in your city. Um, and because I would guarantee that they have some sort of website with information on it where you can see, you know, what's actually legally required, what your consumer rights are, um, what funeral homes are available and closest to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that would be my advice um, to you guys uh, just across the border. Well, and I think that that's what I love about your mission is the education. And, you know, at Black Dress Consultants, I feel that that is one of our biggest missions as well. It's just education, shout it from the rooftops that, guys, this is, is going to happen. We all know what's coming. Let, let's be better prepared for it. Um, let's look down the road a little bit and make some better plans so that our family doesn't have to be burdened with all of those decisions. Um, and I, you know, I, I love that you're sort of bringing this whole new um, meaning to BYOU, bring your own term, <laughs> you know, so, and I wish yeah. that I had that when my mom passed away several years ago, I think that was before the legislation or um, that, you, that funeral homes were required um, to allow you to bring your own urn. And I think I was telling you yesterday, you know, they wanted to sell me the scattering urn. And it was, it was basically like a glorified coffee make cream creamer can. And it was $180. And I was, yeah. like, I mean, I loved my mother more than my luggage, but I was like, $180. Are you kidding me? So yeah. um, I love that this education that you're really pushing people look around, check prices, um, look at the laws, look at what you're only legally required to do. Um, because I think knowledge is power and I think it's only going to benefit people. Exactly. Um, so what is next for, for Irene? Like what's, what's on the horizon? Global domination? I mean, what, what is, what's on the horizon? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say global domination just yet. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think ideally we'd really like to take our services across Canada. Um, you know, I, you know, prior to actually, you know, being employed with Irene, uh, my grandmother passed away, except she lived uh, in British Columbia. And out in British Columbia, there is no Irene currently, and there is no service that allows us um, to make the arrangement online or, you know, to look at pricing online. So, you know, so yeah, I would say like 
our next step would be to bring this service to um, Canadians and other provinces, because I think that, you know, yes, Ontario is the biggest province, but there's so much more of Canada and so many more Canadian families who could really benefit from this. Yeah, absolutely. What about coming to the U.S.? Y'all deciding to cross the border? I mean, I think eventually that would be, you know, the the ideal situation, um, you know, would be to be available, you know, in all of North America and, you know, kind of be, you know, the leader in death care in terms of education and services. Um, you know, I think down the line that would kind of be, you know, the ideal goal and situation. But I think, you know, part of, you know, the hurdle with doing that is that, uh, funerals, uh, the funeral industry in general is a really traditional industry that's, you know, been a little bit slower to adapt to change. So I think that a lot of the time, you know, when you say online funeral home, or you can make arrangements not in person, sometimes people get a little apprehensive about just using technology or just um, not having to leave your home or not needing to do things in person. But, you know, rest assured, you know, at least with our service, you are talking to real people. All of our funeral directors are licensed and really well educated. You know, um, our managing funeral director even has been in the industry for about eight years. Um, and prior to working with Irene, worked in traditional funeral homes. So she knows a lot about the industry and how it works. So, you know, I would say that that would probably be the biggest hurdle with expansion is just you know, disrupting an industry that's been really slow to adapt to change and really slow to adapt the use of technology, you know, for the benefit of the consumers. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I think you're, you're right on the money there. It, you know, it has been slow to change. And I just love seeing all of these companies that are that are popping up and to disrupt it and just help people make better, more educated decisions. Um, you know, I'd love if anybody has a question for Marina, you can pop it in in the comment. But um, what else have we had? What have we not covered? I mean, I feel like even though we've only been talking for 27 minutes, like we've covered so much and we could talk and talk and talk and talk. But what have we what are, what is something that I haven't asked you about about Irene? Um, let's see. I mean, I feel like one of the things maybe people may not know um, is that we also have a blog. So, you know, and our blog talks a lot about, um, you know, grief. We talk about grief. We talk about financial planning. We talk about, you know, we educate between what's the difference between hospice and palliative care. You know, a lot of people don't know the difference between that. Um, you know, a lot of our information is specific to Ontario, but, you know, we talk about, you know, what happens to your social media accounts after you die? Yeah. Um, you know, if your loved one dies in debt, you know, how to manage that, who, you know, to notify after someone passes away, which, you know, can be a really something really overwhelming if the deceased didn't have a good record of their finances or, you know, all of the, you know, associations that they were a part of, or all of, you know, the credit cards or banking yeah. information they have, right? So oh, don't get um, me started about digital assets. <laughs> I could nerd out about that all day long. That is one of my biggest missions is to help people get their digital estate um, organized. So there are lots of, you know, education pieces, as you said, document checklists on. Our yeah. Okay. And so, you know, how do people get in touch with you? How do they what, what's um, irene.ca? Yes. So um, for those who are interested in learning more, um, you can visit us at irene.ca. Um, you can also find us on pretty much every social media platform. So we're on Instagram and Twitter at irene. At, um, at irene cremations. We are, we are on Facebook, LinkedIn. We're even on Pinterest. You know, if you're looking for, you know, our blogs in, you know, Pinterest form, or if you're looking for something specific, like, um, you know, how to make a will online. Um, yeah, we've got, um, you can find us pretty much anywhere. So we really pride ourselves on being, um, you know, accessible on all social media platforms and through our website. So, you know, we really want to make sure that people can find us and know that we're out there because our mission is to really, you know, help people and, bring, you know, transparent and affordable services to as many people as possible while also, you know, equipping them with the knowledge to make informed um, decisions that benefit them and their families. 
I love, I mean, could you have said it more perfectly? Like that's, <laughs> that's amazing. Yes. So I love it. I love your mission. I love your vision. I love your goals. I love what you guys are doing to educate and help families um, in an instant where that we're all going to face. Um, so I just love it. And I, I mean, I think you and I could sit here and wax on poetically for hours. But, oh, easily. <laughs> I mean, but we're not going to do that to people. But I just wanted to thank you so much for being my inaugural guest on the Aftershocks of After Loss. Again, I'm Rachel Donnelly with Black Trust Consultants, and we'll be here every Tuesday night um, on Instagram at 7 Eastern. And we're just going to talk all, all about the things. And like, like I said, I think we can only go down from here. I don't think we could have, you could have made this more perfect tonight. So, <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Honestly, it was an honor to be your first guest. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to watching the series and yeah. learning more about other, you know, services and individuals in the death care space. So I'm awesome. really looking forward to it. This is really great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Marina. And thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll look forward to seeing you next Tuesday evening. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody.